time, uh, I would like to call Pastor Ismael Maliwat to give us a message uh, from the Word of God. Good evening, Pastor. Good evening, Paul. It's an honor to be back. I was with you several weeks ago. But uh, as your pastor mentioned, that I'm 62. <laughs> could not deny it anymore, it's been said. <laughs> I'm 62 really, I'm in the ministry for, I should say, 40, 45. 40 as pastor and five as pastor's problem. <laughs> My visit here in America is really a blessing. The song was sung, uh, what's the title of the song? It's not in vain. It's not in vain. <clears throat> My ministry for 40 years are uh, really not in vain. Right. It's a privilege and honor to be in America. And I learned many things with you people. A friend of mine told me, if you want to know more about America, you should be in America. <laughs> indeed, indeed. I should be and must be in America to know more about America. If you want to know more about Filipinas, Filipino, you go and visit Philippines. <laughs> right? right? As simple as that. Yeah. Uh, I learned many things about many things about ministries. If I am to pastor a church here in America, well, I won't do it. It takes a lot of grace. When I started the work in the Philippines, uh, I received grace of God. It's only by the grace of God I was able to build churches. But here in America, if I'm the one pastoring the church, I should say double the grace, God. <laughs> I cannot do it. I graduated from a Bible Baptist College. But I know that that won't suffice. Mm -hmm. Different culture, many different things. But the thing that I like most when I visited America, I learned many things. Mm -hmm. uh, like this one, I don't know whether this church believes in Christmas. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But just to add a few things that I learned, uh, Christmas tree is becoming controversial in America, in the Philippines, right? Mm -hmm. He says, I can practice, practice, etc., etc. But I, when, when I visit America, I even heard that there is what you call here Christmas tree plantation, something like that. Yeah. And I have in my mind things that are we, we are doing should be explained, right? Should be connected to the event. One thing that I saw here before Christmas, the Halloween event, I don't believe in Halloween. Mm -hmm. But you know, in Halloween, usually in America, you have pumpkins, right? Mm -hmm. There is there and they will put a lantern there and, and they will be uh, exhibiting in houses. And I said to myself, what, what is that pumpkin? Is that connected to Halloween? So I became curious and I asked a, a friend of mine, why is it that there are many pumpsky, uh, pumpkins in, 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 in your place during Halloween? And, I said, and he said, Don't, uh, ignore the Halloween. It has nothing to do with Halloween, thank God. I don't believe in Halloween. But that pumpkin, those pumpkin, pump, pump, pumpkin, 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 sorry. <laughs> Pumpkins, okay? I'm not connected with Halloween, but it's connected with harvest. Mm -hmm. Because November is a harvest season. season. Right. A Thanksgiving day. Thanksgiving, yeah. And they will be exhibiting huge pumpkins. and big, big pumpkins to show to the world that God is good. Amen. God bless America so much. Mm -hmm. So, thank God I was informed. Mm -hmm. When I go back to the Philippines, I'll tell them. <laughs> it has nothing to do with Halloween. <laughs> and the next thing that I have to have an answer is the Christmas tree. As I said, here in America as well as in Canada, they have what they call Christmas tree plantation. Mm -hmm. Because almost every house here in America do have Christmas. This is not Christmas tree. <laughs> Almost every house, millions of Christmas trees are needed every December, right? Am I right? Almost every house here, even some churches. So I wonder, why is that tree connected with Christmas or Halloween? Oh, I'm a winter. So I begin to search. And I found out, I come to know that <laughs> the, the the pine tree or the cedar wood, including the evergreen, are the trees that can endure fall 
fall, 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 season. fall season or autumn. The rest of the tree will become a, a, a soil. Dry. 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 We call it pangatong na lang yan. <laughs> well, you won't enjoy the trees. I, I visited the New York and the towns where I stay. There are plenty of dry, dry trees. When I was in London, I, I used to visit that place, very beautiful place, because there, there was that beautiful tree. But when, when, when winter came, I came and visited there. Oh, the tree was already dry. It's like Nara in the Philippines. You know Nara? Yeah. The tree that will be having you know, leaves right like that. And I was educated by that. The only tree that can survive fall or autumn, autumn. pine tree. Mm -hmm. That's why I saw the beautiful pine trees in Canada, in some part of America, in uh, uh, Buffalo. Mm -hmm. They are really beautiful. And they said the reason why many Americans put that particular tree during Christmas is because that reminds them that it's already winter. It has nothing to do with me. Be there as it may, I don't argue, I won't argue. <laughs> but the thing that I say is, I learned many things <coughs> in America when I was in, in America, America, right? <laughs> I cannot be dogmatic in a place where I haven't visited yet. Like England, we are familiar with Spurgeon, right? The prince of the preachers, right? When I went to London, I even saw the church pastor by Spurgeon. I happened to visit the burial on the top of John Bunyan, the one who wrote Pilgrim's Progress. And I learned many things. You know, people learn through troubles, right? So <clears throat> tonight we'll not be talking about histories or everything like that, but we'll talk about the Bible, what the Bible says. I've heard about this thing. Have you heard about Christmas tree less Christmas? or Christless Christmas. Have you heard topic like that? Christless Christmas. What is Christmas without Christ? Mm -hmm. Christ is very, the, some are saying, the reason for the season is none other than Christ. Without Christ, what are we going to do? Whether you believe in Christmas or you don't believe in Christmas, it doesn't matter. But the thing is Christ was born mm -hmm. 2,000 years ago. And the purpose of being born is to to die. In the book of uh, Ecclesiastes 6, 7, verse 7, it says it's more important to talk about death than that of life, birth. You believe that? It's more important to talk about death instead of talking about life or birth. That's true with Christ. What's the purpose of Christ dying 2,000 years ago if he won't be hanging on the cross and say it is done or it is finished? So I won't be talking about Christ less Christmas, Christmas three less Christmas. But we will talk about tonight a life without a shepherd. A shepherd less life. Mm -hmm. A life without a shepherd. Mm -hmm. You know, to live on earth without having a shepherd is really a worse kind of life. And my text is to be found in the book of Matthew. I usually use this to to encourage the people that we should be praying for the harvest. Uh, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send more laborers to the field. Because in uh, the verses before, he's all uttering those sayings. And this is my main, main text. It says in chapter 9, the book of Matthew. 9.36 of your Bible, it says here, that when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they were fainted and were scattered abroad as what? Sheep. Sheep having no shepherd. Let's pause for a while and let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us the word. Now for the exposition of it, we would be expecting wisdom from a life. And of course, the Holy Spirit to illumines us. I pray that you will touch every heart tonight that will be blessed by the word. Use me, cover me <coughs> uh, behind this uh, sacred desk 
so that they won't be seeing myself, but they will be able to see Christ in me. In his name we ask these things. Amen. As I said, we'll be talking about a shepherdless life. I have a little study about the sheep. The sheep is a, a kind of animal very vulnerable in many things. Due to that of horse, it's really different. A horse and the sheep, if you will try to uh, use a, what do you call that, the stigma or what do you call that, the, the one they use to represent their country, Let's try to look at history like uh, Babylon, Babylonian Empire. There were animals mentioned during the time of Daniel when he saw a vision like a leopard and uh, what are other things? Lion, the leopard, the beast, something like that. But when we talk about strength, we cannot use sheep. Well now, if we want to see a human, we will be needing horse, but never a sheep. You know why? Sheep is very vulnerable. A sheep could hardly survive in the desert or in the forest without a shepherd. You see the uh, the physique of the the sheep or the lamb. Uh, is he is he like a macho man? I mean, huh? unproportion, very big. I mean, don't look at me. <laughs> Talk about the sheep. Very big tummy and a little leg. leg. But why, when they, this particular animal went into the forest and they will be uh, poked into a fighting place, they could hardly survive. They cannot save themselves from a certain spring or what, they will need someone. But other animals, they can survive. They can survive alone. The goat, <coughs> you let the goat, in, in some palace there are plenty of goats there. You just leave the goat and they can survive. They can eat plenty of grass. But the sheep are different. They really need a shepherd. They really need a shepherd. That's the wonder of it. I don't know why God designed it that way, but God is more knowledgeable than us. Yeah. Maybe to tell us that as human, we too cannot survive without finding a shepherd. Yeah. If tonight you are not yet sure in life that you already found a shepherd in life, then you are better. When God, the Lord Jesus, saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion because they were fainting. Not only that, because they were likened to what? Sheep without a shepherd. Try to visit the Philippines. In the Philippines, we should be really praying for the Lord of the harvest that he will send more laborers because they are really like sheep without a shepherd. I wonder why there are many Filipinos, and Americans are happy for this, because Americans today cannot go to Vietnam to start a work, right? Am I right, sir? People had to go there to, to, to Vietnam and start a missionary work. Because when the Viet Cong see you coming, as American, they'll plan bad things for you. But whenever they see us Filipino coming, oh, we will be welcome. That's why they are saying that Philippines are now being used by God to become missionaries to other Asian countries. Well, that's good. I agree with that. But uh, don't get me wrong on this conviction of mine. Why go to different countries just to win? Actually, not to win, but to gather Filipino people. Some Filipino pastors will go to Hong Kong, not to win the Chinese, <laughs> but to gather the Filipino. You see my point? Some Filipino pastors will go to Middle East, not actually to win who are the people in Middle East. Arab. The Arab people, right? But they will just gather the Filipino people. Some will even go to Italy, not actually to win the Italian. But they will gather there the Filipinas. 
And I said to myself, why go to places like Italy, Rome, and every foreign country just to win Filipino? Actually, it's not winning, it's just gathering. Mm -hmm. Those that are saved in the Philippines and went to Middle East to work. Don't get me wrong, I'm not against the, that kind of missionary. If that is the will of God for them, so be it. Who am I to question that? Mm -hmm. I'm only using my, my knowledge about it. Say, if you want to catch more, what's that fish in, in America, and, and you can have it uh, gather well in Alaska, what kind of is? Salmon. Salmon, what? Salmon. How do you pronounce that? Salmon. Salmon. In the Philippines, we call it salmon, <laughs> but in here, you call it salmon. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to get more salmon, where will you go? go to you go to Alaska. <laughs> You don't need a fishing rod there. The salmon will just jump. <laughs> See? We went to the place where the, a preacher friend of mine mentioned, where is that uh, you, where you came from? In California. I said that people went fishing. They tried to oh, find some. Uh, uh, Redondo Beach. Redondo Beach. Yeah, I went there. And I saw that people catching fishes, mackerel. If you want to get more galungong, <laughs> GG, where will you go? GG. <laughs> GG, galungong. Yeah. You go to the Philippines, right? The Chinese people are good. They will get all these mm, sardines in our country, bring it to China, and then bring it back to the Philippines in Cali. <laughs> <laughs> and somewhat similar, when it comes to winning souls, why go out? There are still many dying people in in the Philippines, right? There are many unriched Filipino people in the Philippines. They need laborers. There are still many Filipino people that are likened to a ship without a shepherd. Right? They are still unriched. Unlike you people here in America, you are rich Filipino people. Right? They are unriched and you are rich. Keep silent for that. <laughs> <laughs> Filipinos here in America are blessed. I believe that America is a blessed country. You have plenty of material things. Imagine the government would even say to the farmers, stop planting potatoes, stop planting, we'll just pay you. Can, can Filipino government do that? <laughs> you have plenty of money here. That's why there are many Filipinos in America that are rich. But there are still many Filipino people in the Philippines that are unreached by the gospel. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> we should win them. What we, what we need to do is to provide them with what? Shepherd. They still need shepherd. And I'll be talking about two shepherds. The chief shepherd, who is Christ in heaven, and the under shepherd, who happen to be us. You know, a life without Christ being the good shepherd is a life of misery. David explained it in the book of Psalms. The Lord is my shepherd. Shepherd I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He did it. Every good thing is experienced because he found the real shepherd. What if David did not uh, find the real shepherd? What, what will happen to his life? A miserable life. But thank God, one time in his life, he found the real shepherd. Jesus one time said, I am the good shepherd. shepherd. If someone tonight is not yet sure of having Christ as your shepherd, I want you to invite him to be your good shepherd. Mm -hmm. Come to Christ and say, Christ, be my shepherd. And that will make your life good enough. I am the good shepherd, the good shepherd give you this life, think of that. You remain as dead, as explained in the book of Ephesians. We were once dead. But when we find Christ in our life, we will be given life. Christ alone will satisfy us. He is a good shepherd. Not only that, if you are already saved, you found the Lord Jesus Christ as your good shepherd, the chief shepherd, you still need another shepherd. Who is that another shepherd? The under shepherd. Pastors are needed. 
There are many people that are saved, but they are unchurched. They are not growing. We believe that the gospel is for the unsaved, but the church is for the saved. The moment a person is saved, he is supposed to look for a church yeah. where he will be taken care of by whom? By the under shepherd like us. Some Christians are not giving importance to their pastors. I see pastors are not any more important in their lives. But you know, a church without a pastor could hardly grow. Do you believe that? I see if you don't believe that. <laughs> Let me repeat the question. Will the church grow without a pastor? No. I believe no. I have an experience in Manila when I was invited several Sundays, Sundays after Sunday, and I asked the church, well, why are you inviting me there? Do you, do you have a pastor? And the deacon said to me, we stop uh, hiring a pastor. We are not pastors or shepherds to hire. But anyway, we should be receiving love gift. And the deacon said to me, it's more cheaper if we will invite guest speaker instead of allowing a, a man to pastor us. And I said to, to him, no, that's good, that's a good opinion. But remember, when God designed the church, he placed a pastor there, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Maybe that, that God put a pastor in the church because God knows that if there are no pastors in the church, there'll be no spiritual feeding inside the church. Mm -hmm. What will happen to the flock? What will happen to the sheep if they're not fed? And therefore, a shepherdless life is a life of mission. Mm -hmm. A church without a pastor is not good. The idea of uh, saving some money for that is really good, but it's not very good. It's not very good. There should be and there must be a pastor in every church. Mm -hmm. Have you visited the church without a pastor? Have you, have you seen a church? <coughs> existing without a pastor, try to see what's happening inside the church. Your pastor, pastor visited the Philippines, what happened? Then your pastor is out. And he came to your church and he told me, he, he kept on drinking while in the airplane, urinating while in the airplane. I had that experience and I said, pastor, you should be careful of your health. Go and visit the doctor. Maybe your blood sugar is too high. We are still needed here. One pastor told me, if you want to live long, be a pastor. <laughs> oh, some of you are laughing. If you want to live long, be a pastor. Do you know Pastor Wes Love Siciliano? Mm -hmm. You know him, right? He's our mentor. Mm. He had a stroke. What happened? He had an operation, open heart surgery. And there was some device placed in him, the pacemaker or something like that. Pacemaker. He, he, he survived more. Mm -hmm. If you want to live long, be a pastor. Why will God kill pastors easily? There are few pastors there. In fact, he's saying, pray ye the Lord of the harvest. And he said, what? More laborers? We need more pastors? Because if we have few pastors, many would experience a what? Shepherdless life. Thank God you are saved. Thank God you found the chief shepherd, right? Like David, he said, I, uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, but on earth, you as a sheep are in need of a human, we call it under shepherd. Why under shepherd? Why is it that pastors are called under shepherds? Does that mean that he is under the sire? Under the sire, you know? No. Under the chief shepherd. Under because there is a chief shepherd. He will give an account to the chief shepherd. But what's the good quality of a good shepherd? The good quality of a good shepherd is that the good shepherd, if Christ the chief shepherd is good one because he said, I gave my life for the sheep, I knew my flock, uh, he paid for the sheep. But the good shepherd, one thing 
quality is needed. The under shepherd he is capable to feed the flock. You see? Shepherd would be and must be a good feeder, able to feed the flock. Back to the man that I mentioned, Pastor Siciliano. We have a subject in, in our country, homiletics, and Pastor Siciliano said, some pastors are not good in feeding the flock. They are too bombastic. They lambast the members. Thou art the man, thou art the man. And he said, to illustrate it, it's like feeding the chicken. When you feed the chicken with corn or palai, you just, you just, get, you just don't get a handful of uh, corn or palai and then throw it to the chick, right? You do it in a nicer way. <laughs> and the chicken will talk. <laughs> yeah, and one of our uh, classmates said, Pastor, you may be right, he said. Pastor, uh, Pastor Lorenzo be that. He said to me, he said to us, Pastor, you may be right. But the moment you throw that particular feeds from your hand, throw it to the chicken, they'll come back. <laughs> they'll come back. So he said, Remain, people, remain as bomb bombastic, lambasta people. Anyway, they come back. Not at all times. We should be knowledgeable of how to feed the flock. That's the good quality of a good under shepherd. Able. You cannot find a perfect under shepherd. Thank God you found the, what? the perfect chief shepherd. But we as under shepherd, we are not perfect. And some are looking for perfect pastor. Should you find one church who is perfect, which is perfect, become a member of the church, that church becomes imperfect, imperfect because you, you were added. <laughs> <laughs> so there, there are no perfect under shepherds. We have many limitations. But the best quality that is required from us is that we are good feeder of the food. We know how to give you food, right? The milk. Is that easy? No, sir. When Paul, when Christ was talking to Peter, he said, Peter, love is me. Do you really love me? You really, do you love me? God was asking Peter, do you love me? What was the response of Peter? Oh, no, no. Thou? For three times. There are interpretations about that. But before saying, then feed my lamb. Sometimes we think that feeding the lamb is an easy task. No. It's a difficult task. Because Christ first assured Peter of these three questions. Some theologian says, first Peter answered it using the, 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 the right uh, English word for love. Eleo. And finally on the third he said, I agape you. The love that does not demand. And I heard someone who said it was repeatedly asked three times to remind Peter of the three what? Denials that he did when after the pack shall crawl, thou shalt deny me. Be that as it may. But what is required in feeding the flock? Love. You see love? Have you seen how the mother feeds her child, mm -hmm. the baby? Mm -hmm. If without love, do you have any new baby, mother, or no? Mm -hmm. Please focus in your life to have more babies. <laughs> Be gone. Mm -hmm. I've heard this preacher that in America, Americans are how should I say it? We are being outnumbered by many Islam today because many American people, even in the Philippines, are afraid to have children because they want to. The man told me it's a selfish thing because if they have more children, they have responsibility, and they don't want responsibility. But Muslim people are producing. Remember Gaddafi who said, in 50 years time, in 50 years time, we will conquer Europe without firing a single bullet. And it's happening now. It's happening now, it's like, because they produce, they produce 
like uh, mushroom. <laughs> they are allowed to get uh, how many wives? Oh my, yeah, they are. Yeah, you say four. Yeah. How many kids will be produced out of four wives? Four times four equals sixteen. Well, the Christian, I cannot feed them. I cannot get them. One will produce one. So I'm asking, are they babysitting? Are they mother? <laughs> You know, in the college that I heard about in Iloilo, they said, don't have your boyfriend or girl, you are not allowed to have boyfriend or girlfriend until you are a fourth year student. Do you have that experience in our college? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> in, our, in our life, yeah. when we were together? Yeah. Are we restricted? <laughs> are we restricted? <laughs> no. You think so? <laughs> that, that's bad. You know why? I said to the young lady I counseled, that's bad. If you will wait for you to graduate, then you'll say, hello, I'm ready, graduate. <laughs> I'm qualified. <laughs> you cannot have an experience as easy as that. Love is emotion. It comes from the heart. Even parents in the Philippines prohibit stuff. That's bad. In America, they went to the extreme. <laughs> that is good. Being young, being younger, you got married, you had a child, not good. I remember the family where I came from, Nana Eligaya. Who is the pastor we had before? Pastor? Tamo. How many children? Nine or ten. Ten? ten. Yeah. And I was adopted. <laughs> I became the eleventh. <laughs> During the prayer meeting, oh, we have more than ten every Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. The Bible says go and multiply. But that's not our subject. I'm only in, injecting it because that's becoming a defeat in ourselves. Islam is growing numerically. And Dapi was right when he said, we will not fire any single bullet. We will conquer you. In the Philippines, they already conquered Islam. When you visit the Philippines, you will only consider the place of the Islam. Where is that? Mindanao. Mm -hmm. But go to Capo now. You know Capo? Yeah. A place in, in, in Manila. Mm -hmm. It's occupied by Islam. Right? Who are the Filipinos here who happen to visit the Philippines recently? You? Have you, have you been to Capo? <laughs> <laughs> you should go to Capo, not to go to Black Mass. Or red. But least, <laughs> you should go to visit Capo and see the, the, the slum. There's plenty. <coughs> Even in a place where I came from, Paco, mm -hmm. in San Andres, there is a community there of Muslims. Muslim. Mm -hmm. They are growing in America. Even in San Antonio, right, Zambales? I visited that place recently, mm -hmm. and I saw there a community of Islam. Wow. And you should be wondering with this new news. <coughs> Batangas is already occupied by Islam. You know, are you aware of that, sis? Not yet? <laughs> Not yet. I haven't been. I'm talking to the Filipino people. <laughs> Excuse for a while, sir. <laughs> you know that? that Batangas, who, who are the Batangueño here? No Batangueño? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are Batangueño, right? <laughs> Many <Yeah>. Manisong. <laughs> ah, Manisong. Why did I say that Batangas is almost captured by the Islam? Because they say, Allah. 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 <laughs> they are now more on Allah than that of me. It's only a joke. But I have seen a mother. A mother taking care of the child. It's difficult. The baby will cry. The baby will be hysterical in it. But the mother will keep on feeding. Why? Because she loves the child. In the ministry, the same thing. The duty of the pastor like us, the, the under-shepherd, is really to feed the flock. Some of us will even think, oh, it's easy. Oh, it's easy. No. It should be done out of compassion. Have you tried pastoring? Have you tried? Mm -hmm. Try it once in a while. <laughs> and you will then understand the life of a pastor. Many pastors are quitting. In the I almost have it experience before I came to America. 
I almost said, it's finished. I've done the work. I've been in the ministry for 40 years. Maybe it's enough. But when I came to America, I saw the fruits of my labor for 40 years. The horizon became wider to me. I want to go back to the Philippines, energized, mm -hmm. to keep on maintaining my work as a shepherd. Amen. Because Amen. I still believe that there are many <coughs> Filipino people suffering. Maybe no shepherd. Mm -hmm. That's my goal, to introduce to them the good shepherd, mm -hmm. my chief shepherd. And I'm willing yes. to be the under shepherd. If you were to ask me, is there any regret that you became but no regret? But the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. So would you mind, brother and sisters, to try to look beyond and see the Philippines, and you will be shocked to know that there are still multitudes of Filipino people wandering around. A sheep having a what? What will you do then? Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will what? Send forth laborers. Laborers. Shepherds like us are laborers. And another thing, thank God that here in America you have a shepherd. Yeah. Your shepherd is your pastor. The other, who is accountable to the chief shepherd? He's sick. He made a testimony. He testified that he is facing a severe trial in life. Mm -hmm. The wife just passed away. And he is now, I believe this, but he said, Pastor, your blood sugar is high. Mm -hmm. You better visit the doctor. Mm -hmm. I had that experience. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, had, I had an experience. Thank God I was able to recuperate from that. That is my testimony. One Sunday, after my preaching, I, 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 I let my family eat. We are eating together, and we are about to walk, go home, drive. I cannot walk. My, my strength is drained. Day after that, I went to the doctor, and the doctor checked my blood sugar. And the doctor said, there is no record. You know what does it mean? Does it mean? Well, what does it mean when it's like your sugar is above wow. 50? Yeah, or 500, I should say. It's dangerous. Yeah. Above 500? Yeah. Wow. Too high. Too high. Right there, I almost died. Mm -hmm. But thank God, because there are still few under shepherd, yeah. the Lord extended my life. Yeah. Or else, many members in Kabite will be. Having no sh shepherd, shepherd as a sheep. Mm -hmm. If you found your real shepherd, the Lord Jesus, be thankful for that. Mm -hmm. No one could ever survive on earth a sheep without a shepherd. Your life, our life is so vulnerable. Without him, we can do nothing. But thank God we Christ, a good shepherd. Quote, uh, Psalms 26, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not. He will make me to lie down in green pasture. You are now in a green pasture here. Yeah. America is a green pasture. You are blessed, honestly. You are blessed here. But try to look beyond because there are still multitudes of people away from this country away from this country. When Jesus saw them, he was moved with compassion. How about you, brothers? Do you really care? Is it nothing to you when souls are dying? Is it nothing to you when Filipino people are having confusion in life, still searching, multitude in pain, having no shepherd? Is it nothing to you? Try to look at them from a different perspective. Many times, Filipino people in America are too succumbed by the material things that we have received. There are still people in our own country in need of a good shepherd. 
The Bible says, pray the Lord of the harvest that he will send. It might be difficult for you to go there and be a shepherd, but you can help by sending some blessings from your pocket and support some missionaries, help them work the work of a good shepherd. Let's just pray to the Lord and ask God to bless us. Shall we stand please? If tonight uh, you are convicted and the Lord is saying something to you, to try to look beyond in our present situation and look on the field, they are very quite full of harvest. They are like multitudes without a shepherd. Would you be with us by, number one, praying to the Lord of the harvest that they will send laborers, or on the other end, you'll say, Pastor, I got them before. I know that I have my duty to help people like Philippines to have shepherd or the chief shepherd and the under shepherd or on the other hand, you felt something inside that you have a great obligation to your pastor, the under shepherd, who is the one feeding you. Whichever is the cause or reason why, will you kneel down right here as the pianist is playing simple song. Will you? I won't be repeating my simple image. If the Lord touches tonight, whatever it is, please kneel down. Slowly come. Yeah. Slowly come. There you are. Yes. Thank you. Just come. The Lord, it's you who said that the world will never return void. Return void. Bless the preaching of the word. Can you talk and speak to the hearts of the people able to hear the message? We will be encouraged to see the fields lighten up with our men and be reminded that people are confused, people are fainting because they are like sheep having no shepherd. And on the contrary, we should be thankful because you gave us our pastor, though he's not perfect, and yet he is capable on feeding us with the right food spiritually. Help me, Lord, to be good enough in taking care of my under shepherd, my pastor. Bless now each one of us here tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Pastor, please come.